About four years ago, Fetch started. We kind of came into the market with a big vision, a long-term vision of not only transporting goods with a mobile robot, but eventually doing picking with the robot. And for the last three years, we've really focused on the mobile part of it, being able to move pieces, cases, and pallets. That means we have a 100 kilogram robot, a 500 kilogram robot, and a 1500 kilogram payload robot. And all of this basically creates a suite of options for our customers to pick and choose and mix and match, you know, because we have different modules that go on top to really provide an end-to-end -end solution across multiple business units. We built the hardware as a platform so that we could build different accessories on top of it. So we have different modules. We have a RFID module that allows you to find inventory in a facility. And we have one that's just a fixed shelf and that's used for moving goods around, but we also have uh, newer accessories like putting a conveyor top on top of the robot, we call it a roller top, and then a cart attaching device so you can move carts around in your facility. And then we eventually made two large robot platforms, the 500 and the 1500. The robots have their own onboard intelligence, um, which you know helps them avoid obstacles and things like that, but all of the cloud robotics software that we've built basically allows us to deploy systems to customers in less than eight hours and allows them to configure it without knowing anything about robotics. Amazon Prime has really ratcheted up the market, uh, I guess, fiercity uh, for getting product to people very fast. And that, that has a lot of implications on how much labor you need, how fast that labor needs to be able to provide units per hour to ship out. And so there were a lot of market factors that really made manufacturing and warehousing a, an ideal market for robotics. And like I said, the problem is solvable. It's, just, it's what robotics is called the semi-structured environment. You kind of know what it looks like. You kind of know what all the, the factors are. And then the people inside that environment are financially incentivized to behave themselves. So if, if, you, if you have a robot riving around, no one's going to jump out in front of it and say, hey, robot, did you find me? Or, you know, do things like that. And so it's really an ideal area to deploy right now. Manufacturing and warehousing just looked like a really tractable problem from a robotics perspective, but there were a lot of other strong market indicators that drove us towards it, like a labor shortage. I know everyone talks about robots and jobs, but there's a massive labor shortage in warehousing and manufacturing. There's about 600,000 unfilled positions. If you go to any conference today for material handling and logistics, all you're going to hear is, I can't find enough people to do the jobs. Um, it's, it's the number one factor that people talk about when it comes to robots and jobs or just labor in general. 